Fantastic. Now, this year is the 50th anniversary of TV's favourite rag and bone men, Steptoe and Son. Sue Corbett reveals what it was like to grow up with a father we all know as Harold! Nice. <laughs> My father, Harry H. Corbett, was a very shy man. He'd never leave the house without uh, sunglasses and hats, you know, to try and disguise himself, which was pointless, really, because he was Harold from Steptoe and Son, which was the most watched show on British TV. Come on, Dad! It's Christmas morning! Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way! Come on, stop sticking in that pit! We've got work to do! Well, Steptoe was well underway by the time I was born, and... Um, Harry used to read the scripts uh, to us. It's, it's how my brother and I learned how to read quite often. And um, But his, his voice, when storytelling, he was a great storyteller, but his voice was entirely different from the one in Stepto. No, I think what you'd say is the outside world has changed. The, the, the permissive age has gone further along the line, and we've just uh, adapted with it. That's about all you can say. But our relationship still stays the same. Harry's first and real strength was as a classical actor. In fact, he was um, called by the critics, they called him an actor of genius, which isn't bad. And he was down at Bristol doing Macbeth when the very first Steptoe script lumped through the letterbox and he read it. He said, delicious, delightful, cannot wait to work on it. It was hard to know how huge Steptoe was, but it, it was everywhere. We were on the holiday in Greece, and a little taverna up in the mountains walked in, and there on the telly, there's Steptoe. And it was like, ah, oh, and all the locals, oh, he's Steptoe. And I think they were quite disappointed that he couldn't actually speak Greek to them, because, of course, he was dubbed in the programme. He didn't know Greek. Well, we've been here since 73. They were looking for a place out of London where... John, my brother and I could run free. Mum got out the car, took one look at the view and and quite rightly fell in love. We were quite rural. We had three donkeys. Dad was working on the show and he was chatting to the animal handler who said, I've got a donkey that needs rehoming. It's retiring from a life in show business. It'd been carrying Jesus, Mary and Joseph. And he said, yeah, we'll have it. He rang Mum and said, donkey? Yeah, that's great. He rang five minutes later and said, oh, it's got a friend. He went, yeah, it's all right, two's fine. And five minutes later, phone goes again, oh, the friend's got a foal. Yeah, three will do. So we had donkeys. Why the H? Under equity rules, one person can only have that name. And there was already a Harry Corbett of city fame that would, had joined equity before him. So he had to change his name and he changed it to Harry H. Corbett. He just pluck the H out of the air, and you always said that it stood for anything. Harry and Wilfred Bramble, who played Albert, um, there was always talk that they didn't get on, didn't like each other, but they got on fine. They worked well together, respected each other. Uh, I think the talk started because they were such consummate actors that uh, it looks like they really hate each other. I cannot spend another Christmas stuck in this rattle with you. <laughs> over 40 years I've done it, year after year after year. And if I asked to do another one, that's what goes start raving right? bonkers. After Steptoe, it was so huge, there could be no return to classical acting. He was typecast and he was accepting of it and realistic about it. So he did different things. From about the age of eight, I dressed him in panto, uh, which was a great experience for me because I wanted to join the business. He knew that and he always had every, took every opportunity to teach me what he could. One of which was don't be late. And he did this by deliberately making me late for a school play rehearsal. <laughs> so I would feel the icy panic of not being on time and it's never left me. I was 13 when Harry died, so he didn't see me or my family grow up and I do often wonder what he would have made of me because uh, being an actor I probably would have been a better actor had he been around he would have been on hand to give criticism and notes um, but I think he would have been more interested in whether I was a decent person because he was a decent person he was a good man and uh, I miss him he was worth missing mm -hmm.